Hi everybody, welcome, let's party. I'm Charles Jeffrey. I'm a 26-year-old London-based fashion designer, artist, and illustrator. I think everyone's a little stained. I kind of just feel like I've jumped out of university and now like all of these big things are happening. Alongside my fashion label, I run a club night in London called Loverboy with my friends Jack and Gareth. Since graduating from Central St Martin's MA in 2015, my brand Loverboy has shown three menswear collections at London Fashion Week. Amazingly, this season, Dover Street Market have asked me to create a Loverboy installation for their New York store, which will be on display in just a few days' time. On my journey, I'll be finding inspiration for my next Loverboy collection, hanging out with New York's freshest DIY design collectives and partying alongside the NYC club kids pushing the boundaries of style. I've asked my best friend, collaborator and artist, Jack, to help me paint a huge canvas which we'll take with us to the Big Apple. This is for a display that we're doing in Dover Street Market, New York a big mural essentially, like just one big sort of illustration. This is Jack, this is my best friend. Hiya. And Jack is helping me fill in the colours. I hope they like it. <laughs> I just hope it doesn't fall apart. <laughs> I mean, I've never been to New York either, so it's like going to be the first time you go into New York, showing work, being part of one of the most amazing stores ever. It will be primary research for me, you know, I'll be going there and I'll be experiencing things which will definitely sort of influence the work that we do, just like how I'm really aware that that's a big tear in that, <laughs> in that paper. How are we going to sort it? Should we just do it from the back? I think that's the only way of doing it, yeah. Do you want to crawl in the back? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Wave again. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> There's been a few times where I've like drunkenly like text Jack being like, oh, I just love that we're just like two idiots not really know what we're doing and making it, it's just fun and it's not scary when we're doing it together. Um, we've just finished a day's worth of painting. It has to dry and then we have to sew it up and then we have to give it to New York. I don't know how we're going to do that. So. <laughs> we'll fly it there with seagulls. We're going to New York. C H A R L E S. That's my name. And cut. We finally land in New York. At the airport, we meet Gareth, the eyes of Loverboy. He's a photographer whose images capture the raw energy of our club nights. He's coming along to do the same here. <gasps> oh my god, the Chrysler building! Oh my god! Oh, she is such a sexy bitch. Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> After a long journey, my first point of call is Dover Street Market the avant-garde fashion superstore from Comme des Garçons, Ray Kawakubo and Adrian Joff. They have stores in London, Tokyo and Beijing and opened this New York branch in 2013. Oh my God! This is great. As a young designer, being asked to create a bespoke installation for the iconic store is a great honour. It's such an achievement to have my collection amongst the likes of Gucci and Junior Watanabe and so many labels that have been a huge inspiration for me. Before I get started, I can't help but explore. This is so nice. Just kind of get in between it. Like, hi. I'm waiting to meet Jack and Gareth, who have brought the suitcase with our installation. I'm a bit nervous because it's been in a suitcase for like over 24 hours and hopefully it should be fine. <laughs> I'm really pleased with the results. It's been kind of a bit of an emotional journey. The fact that I've got my friends here to help me with it, it just made it so easy, like every other project that we do. It still kind of shocks me a little bit because I kind of just feel like I've just jumped out of, you know, university and now like all of these big things are happening. But I think it's a really beautiful thing to be a part of.
Our whole brand is based around clubbing culture. It's an essential part of Loverboy research. I'm going to find out if there are any New York brands that also take direct inspiration from nightlife. We're here at New York Fashion Week and we're here at the Hit by Air show. It's one of those brands which, like what we do, has a heavy nightlife influence. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to be touched by what will probably be a really beautiful show. Hood by Air was founded by Shane Oliver in 2006 after his successful club nights drew in huge crowds. Everyone wanted a piece of the night to wear in the daytime. I'm lucky enough to go backstage before the show starts. We're looking at the clothes backstage before they go out in the runway. Being a wee bit cheeky. Hello, my name is Wedge. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's fucking sick. That is insane. Those boots, like backwards boots, I've never seen anything like that in my life. I think it represents something in New York that you won't find anywhere else with any other brands. It has a, a lot to owe to New York Nightlife. I mean, that's where it started. I mean, Shane was a DJ, and it's when he started making these t-shirts that just went off the rail that, you know, he pushed it and made it more and, you know, exercised his vision. This is where the actual energy of New York is, and I know I'm super excited to see it. When they first casted me a, a couple years ago, I was complaining in a jail cell on a Sunday, did a campaign for Hood by Air on a Thursday. The following Sunday, I was walking the runway. New York fashion shows are boring. This show is not for those kinds of people. Fucking unbelievable, like that blew my mind. It represents a, a scene in New York which deals with a lot of prejudice, and I think this brand communicates a lot of soul and a lot of real truth. The show faithfully echoed the subversive nightlife of the city, a scene I desperately want to see for myself, but that comes later. As the sun sets, I'm heading back to Midtown where the installation we brought from London will be shown to the public and specially selected guests. I'm pure nervous. It's just kind of like an uncanny feeling. Someone came up to us and they were like, you're a guy from Lover Boy, and I was yeah. like, okay. This is so weird. Yeah. We're in New York, like, so far away. I've never been here before. I'm so proud of him. I feel like his mom or something. <laughs> Katrina is a friend of mine from the Masters. Everyone else got a bit lost on the way and done, like, crazy stuff, but you always had your own thing. New York Fashion Week's not really like London Fashion Week. It's quite reserved, and this is not reserved, and it brings something totally different, and I think New York needs that. <laughs> New York needs Charlie Jeffrey. Oh my God. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Yeah. I'm so grateful to be part of a store like this. Like, I mean, it's been a dream come true. Just to be able to actually be in that building and to be around all these other designers and just to be like given the respect and the gratification, you know, you're kind of like, oh my God, this is actually me. Like, people coming up and saying, no, thank you, thank you. And you're like, no, thank you for being part of this. It's a Chrysler. Look at it. It's a Chrysler. Katrina, it's a Chrysler. Ah! Chrysler. Look at this. I'm in the city that never sleeps to find out what a real night out in New York is like. Look at everybody. Straight people, muscle queens, drag queens, trannies. So many scenes have been born here. It's a city undergoing constant reinvention. But before I can explore more of this amazing city's underground club culture, I want to see New York before the sun goes down. I've come to Cat's Deli, the actual diner where Harry met Sally to start my tour. Should start here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to see. 
And then I think it's really important for us to go to the Empire State Building, you know, that place. And you know, Central Park would just be the best place for us to go to the last bit, I think. You know, the kind of like situation. <laughs> I want to meet some more designers in New York. I'm looking to see if anyone else makes work like we do. So I'm gonna meet Rio Uribe, the founder of Gypsy Sport, at his apartment come studio in Harlem. After working in the stockroom at Balenciaga, Rio went on to start his own brand and received the prestigious CFDA prize in 2015. I'm excited to see this kind of raw energy that's brought by their sort of nomadic kind of take on research, like how they kind of clash things and put things together and collage stuff. There's lots of similarities in the way that I feel that they work, which is similar to the way that we work. When I first moved to New York, I remember I see some dude in a white wedding dress, like storming the middle of the street and like stopping traffic. And I was like, fuck, I'm home. Like, this is exactly <laughs> where I want to be. This is perfect. What's been your favorite collection that you've done so far? And, or like, kind of just talk to me about that process. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's sure. what I'm most interested in. When, when I started Gypsy Sport, I first started with a Tumblr page. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of like Google whatever the hell you wanted and find images of 1920s flappers just as quick as you could find like porn and everything else. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to turn all of those images and ideas into a collection. Mm -hmm. You guys, are you all like friends? Like how did this whole structure sort of happen? Like We are friends mm -hmm. and we all work together on the brand and it's kind of cool to have artists who are contributing themselves to Gypsy Sport but also have all of their own things going on mm -hmm. outside, which is really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that sounds a lot like how we work with Loverboy. I, I feel like casting is the funnest part of the, yeah. of the process. We're a community brand, so we always like reach out on Instagram or Grindr or Facebook or wherever else we have access to like strange people who we don't know and see all the time. I just think mixing real people into the mix is kind of changing what a lot of the more established brands have been doing forever. And it just feels good to have your friends be like at your show with you backstage, mm -hmm. hanging out, getting ready. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Collage is a huge part of it. Um, this is like an accidental thing. Sometimes when we don't have enough like mannequins in the in the house, we pin another piece on top of it to mm -hmm. keep working, and then we have a new style. That's a really good. Yeah. That's such a good way to work. A lot of that. stuff is accidental. <laughs> I've always thought like a t-shirt is the most genderless thing you can wear because mm -hmm. it fits everybody. I'm going to chill with some of my homies. Like I feel like I'd wear that, and just they'd be like, "Yo, what are you wearing?" But like, <laughs> and they'd be like, "I respect that though, because like that's you." I really want to hug you. Like, thank you so much for like having us here. Like, it's just so inspiring. Thanks for you can understand that like, they, they must problem solve things in ways that we probably problem solve things back in London. It's, you know, it's about working with friends, it's about like, talking it out, and you know, if you need to go and chill by the river, then you do that to take things out. One of the best things that I heard from them was him talking about the collaboration aspect. I think that's one thing that we try to pioneer so much is like collaboration being a force of nature against the fashion industry, really. It's so amazing to meet New Yorkers who live, work and think like us. Next, I'm visiting someone I've only seen on Instagram, Scotty Sussman or Sussy. Sussy's promised to take us out for the night of our lives. God. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. These are my headpieces. These are more headpieces. And over there are some more headpieces. Everyone's a different story and a different concept and a different element of my being. Shut up. Oh my right? God. I can't walk in them and never wear them out. Jack basically like um, showed me uh, Sissy's Instagram, and then it was just like amazing. Like, I was like, oh, fucking hell, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like, each one we were just like liking, like, 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 like. When was the moment when you were kind of like, okay, like, this is my character, like, this is like a kind of a chapter that I'm opening? Or has it been something that you kind of like reflected on and then seen, okay, like, this is now my look? My looks were really bad at first, and I can like confidently say that. And I'm happy they were bad because I learned my lessons and I learned what shitty looks like. Like, C-Punk was a really dark yeah. era. It was a really <laughs> dark era. I think we really need to do, like, a headpiece story for next yeah, season, for sure. We no, no, oh my god, no clothes and just headpieces. Just headpieces. Like, Paint, well, painted headpieces. A little distant clothes. <laughs> when I finally came up with, like, a solid program for myself and, like, a schedule, mm -hmm. it could just be, it's timeless. It's yeah. a timeless costume that 
exists in a photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beyond nightlife. It's just beyond having the vehicle to do what we do, which is dress up. And some people commit to more of a fashion route, and some people commit to more of a nightlife route, but the nightlife is just more playful. Mm -hmm. But we're doing the same thing. We're just creating things to put onto our body. Mm -hmm. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Sorry. I think... Yeah, the banana. You can wear that tonight. I've got one here as well. How does the look come to you? Is it quite organic? It's like a multiple stage process. Mm. Getting ready with these girls is some of the most fantastic moments we can have together because we're all creating together at the same time. We're being taken to Lady Fag's legendary night, Battle Him in Manhattan. A dark, windowless box of throbbing music where the city's best dressed creatures of the night come to play. Every fucking night of the week is a new party. Oh my god, that's amazing. Honestly, yeah, it really is going to battle. Knowing that there are thriving queer club spaces like Battle Him is so important to me and clearly integral to New York's youth. Battle Him is a place where everyone can be themselves and I love it. It's beautiful and strange, inspiring and inclusive. I'm excited for the future of our lover boy. I think right now I'm at like eight feet. Oh, with headpiece, headpiece I'm 10. New York nightlife is experiencing a revival, spurred on by new wave of club kids, and I've got a front row seat. Inside these doors, there is a magical, magical world. Seeing this in real life is just more than I could ever imagine. As we near the end of our trip, we've been asked to host a Loverboy party in New York, downtown at Le Ban, which is both hugely exciting and terrifying. I need tips on how to run a New York club night. So when I get the opportunity to meet Suzanne Barch, the Swiss-born queen of New York nightlife, who's been throwing parties for the last 30 years, I can't resist. Ironically, I kind of got my lessons to do nights in London. I mean, I went to Blitz, I went to Lee's Taboo, and I came to New York. Studio 54 was going downhill. There was nothing colorful, nothing high energy. So I said, I have to bring this to New York. We've just started doing our club night in London. We've done it for like a year now. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who's going to be doing something like that? You care. You do it from love and heart and caring. It works. It's because you want to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. It can work. We, we all want to pay our rent. It can work, but that magic isn't there. It is like the most beyond being able just to chat to you. And oh. I just want to say like a massive thank you from the bottom of my oh, heart. Like it's you. an Did absolute I honor to me. You, you've made me like, I've been trying to hold back tears. Like I, I'm Being sorry. West to be. <laughs> Meeting Suzanne was incredible. She proved how integral nightlife is to creatives here, how stimulating it can be, and how much faith the older generations have in the kids of New York. Next morning, we meet up with our new friends, Susie and Harry, to explore the best vintage spots in the city hoping to find an outfit for the Loverboy party tonight. We head to Alan and Susie's, a much-loved New York landmark, owned by a couple as eccentric as the pieces in their shop. We brought Charles here because we love Alan and Susie, <laughs> and they're fabulous. There are so few stores in New York left that cater to what it is that we do and really support it. We used to go to three parties for Every night. Every night. At least three. And it's being brought back by these um, young kids. Young people. And they're doing it differently. Mm -hmm. They have their own vision. They have their own right. everything. Mm -hmm. And their own style. And their own style. Yeah. They're, they're, they're great. Best really things in the store. Oh, yeah. Oh, babe, some fitness on. I mean, this, <laughs> this, it's like walk to the camera. <laughs> DIY doesn't mean that we make everything ourselves. DIY means you put the whole concept together. Mm. So vintage shopping is very important. It's important to look back, but then it's also important to kind of look at like the themes that kind of influence that too. Like if you're really inspired by a certain designer at a certain period, you should look at what they looked at to kind of do your own version of it. So we're yes. here at Screaming Mimi's. 
the place to shop and, get, and find you some looks, honey. <laughs> what's the lover boy color palette? Like, what are we looking yeah, for? Yeah, like, what's like, the look? Red, blue, and white. Red, blue, and white. Yeah, literally. Okay. Like, well, I mean, like, like, there we go. There, there we go. <laughs> America. So, <yeah. laughs> uh, that is fucking perfect. After deciding on my outfit for tonight's party, I'm visiting one last show before Fashion Week is over. Vikira is an emerging brand who makes futuristic fashion by looking into the past, always challenging their own ideas to ignite constant regeneration. We make every single thing that like exists on the runway, which is pretty crazy. Well, you guys sew it yourselves? Yeah, yeah, and the hats, and yeah, like it's That's fantastic. Yeah. So like, you taught yourself how to sew. Oh yeah. Um, like, did you go to any courses, or was it just self-taught? No, just YouTube. Amazing. Yeah, it's so, I think so good. we have to like invent creative ways to like do things and that's why our pieces like get interesting. I think if we knew how to do it like exactly, exactly yeah. I think it would just look kind of boring. Yeah. It's so impressive to hear that Vakira are self-taught and literally hand make everything on the runway from start to finish. We're setting up for our Loverboy party on our final night in New York. As always, bringing the great British red, white and blue, but this time adding some stars and stripes. I've been so incredibly inspired by everyone we've met on this journey. I do feel kind of inspired to just kind of go back home um, and just get making again. Um, it's made me want to focus more on what it is to be British, not what it is to be anything else, which is really great because like, I've just been comparing the two things. I'm kind of satisfied after this trip. Like, I full on got a photo of Paris Hill. <laughs> so I, do, I can't, nothing would top that for me. <laughs> I got a feeling. We've met the new club kids and the old guard of NYC nightlife, seen shows by emerging brands and established brands. We've taken inspiration from painstakingly handcrafted gems, dispirited club goers and party throwers, and DIY self-curated looks. If there's one thing I've learned from my trip, is that there's a way to make your future your own, and it's by having a core group of friends and collaborators who you can ride out the journey with. City. Look how beautiful we, everybody we is. You. Being with like-minded people when the world is against us, it can make us feel like we have a place. That's the best thing when you like go out and you see somebody and you're like, shit, how did you put that together? I can't get over the support that we've had so far. Like, you just have to keep going. Take on the project that's in front of you and like move with it. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> Do ghetto, Megan, do ghetto, and they are massive, and they are massive.